What is tone? Tone is the attitude of the speaker or writer. Tone can be created in multiple ways. Word choice, punctuation, sentence length, and more can create the tone of a piece of writing or communication. Sometimes, tone can be misunderstood by the recipient. Let's look at ways in which tone can be created. In order to ensure that your tone is received correctly, we'll talk through some of these items of consideration. Punctuation, all caps or no caps, sentence length, connotation, emoticons, and salutations. Punctuation matters, especially in punctuation. The difference between a period and an exclamation point can determine whether you sound angry, indifferent, or serious. Look at this sentence. We have to get this done today. Versus, we have to get this done today. With simply a period, it reads as a matter of fact statement. With an exclamation point, this sentence could be read as a demand or statement of frustration. Writing in all capital letters may seem to be a pointless conversation, but the usage of all caps continues to be something that occurs in social media statuses, emails, and texts. Generally, writing in all caps suggests that you are yelling or angry. Sometimes, you might put one word into all caps in order to create emphasis when bold or italics are unavailable, but it is a best practice to avoid all caps in all instances. Short sentences, long sentences, how we phrase our thoughts and the length we choose can make a difference in the way our tone is interpreted. Short, choppy sentences may suggest annoyance. Consider how you fully form or don't fully form a thought when responding to an email or a student's comments. Connotation is defined as the cultural, historical, and emotional definition of a word. Where a snake is a reptile that slithers across the ground, the connotation of the word snake can suggest that someone is sneaky or not easily trusted. Paying close attention to the words that we choose, as well as how they might be defined based on our audience's contextual understanding and experiences, can save embarrassment and insult. Emoticons are rapidly growing in usage due to new emoticon keyboards and the ability of browsers and word processing programs to convert a punctuation emoticon into an actual image. Use of emoticons can sometimes truly help express how you feel, but beware. Emoticons should be used carefully and usually with those who you already know. When writing an email or leaving student feedback, it's a best practice to include a salutation. Instead of simply writing a response and not addressing the recipient directly, consider how to incorporate his or her name into what you've written. Your audience brings a set of experiences to any piece of writing. When you draft an email or create a response to student work, be certain you keep in mind the recipient's understanding of what you're saying, the context of the piece of writing, and the background that the recipient might have. Remember that writing an email to someone new to a situation may require a quick rundown of the details. In our next video, we'll discuss specifics about tone as they are related to feedback. Until then, take into account these three suggestions. First, be certain to read and reread your communication or response. If you're working with a crucial conversation, it may help to read the communication out loud. You'd be surprised what you might actually hear in your text. Next, consider pausing before hitting send. If you happen to be writing based on emotion, you may not have drafted a text that has the tone you intended. Save this response to your drafts or come back later with a clear mind. And lastly, while it's vital to be aware of what you're writing and how you're phrasing your words, remember that you should be vigilant, but not hypervigilant. The ways by which tone is created will quickly become second nature with practice.